This podcast is sponsored by nobody. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now I am so excited for today's guest because I've been struggling all year to get a guest from the original West Side Story and it's finally going to happen today. Don Jeffrey put me in touch with Tony Mordente who played Action. Yes, Action is going to be on Splat from the Past today. And I just cannot wait. The guy has had a, uh, just an amazing career beyond West Side Story. He guest starred on um, Combat, The Outer Limits. He was in The Longest Day. He uh, produced and directed TV shows, Mama Cass's uh, special, Don't Call Me Mama. He directed episodes of Rhoda, Angie, all the Stephen J. Cannell series back in the 80s. He's had an amazing career, and we're going to talk about all that stuff today. He's also a choreographer. He's very passionate about dancing as well, and it's going to be a great conversation. I want to thank Don so much for putting me in touch with Tony. I just cannot wait, and he's a man who needs no introduction, so that's all I'm going to say. So yeah, here is my interview with Tony Mordente. Good morning, Tony. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you today? I'm waking up. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> oh, good. So, uh, what's up? Oh, nothing much. I, I want to tell you, this is such a tremendous honor. I was glad that uh, Don could uh, sort of, um, you know, hook us up here. I'm, I'm so glad. Uh huh. Well, how's your day going so far? It's going pretty good. Good. It's going pretty good. So. Going back in time, how old were you when you started dancing? Uh, I was uh, just uh, 12, about 12 years old, I'd say. About 12 years old. Yeah. Were your parents dancers? No. <laughs> nobody in my parents, uh, nobody in my family was a dancer or professional or anything like that. Nothing to do with the business. Mm -hmm. so my mother just decided to um, take me off the, the Brooklyn streets. <laughs> yeah, so you got inv involved in uh, school plays and all of that? Uh, no, actually not in school. Uh, my mother just took me um, to um, well, uh, like a tap dancing class, which I absolutely hated. Mm -hmm. Um you know, at first I didn't want to leave my friends. That was first of all. Second of all, I couldn't care less about that. I loved music. That was the whole reason I think my mom got me involved was uh, was that. So that was the reason. Nice, nice. Are you are you trained in every type of dancing? No, actually not. I, I, I study tap and uh, the way things have it with those yearly uh, concerts that they do to make all the family and friends come to them. <laughs> um, there was a teacher there, from uh, a ballet teacher from New York, who offered a scholarship right. to ballet, which was even worse for me. Um, but my mother thought, she didn't talk me into it, but she just thought it might be worth trying, you know, into Manhattan. Right. And um, I just think I took like a duck to it, you know, and the first class I ever had, I just absolutely loved it. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so after high school, did you, did you study uh, dancing and acting? Uh, I went to the High School of Performing Arts. So I auditioned for high school, and I made the audition. So I studied. We had some great ballet teachers at the high school. Uh, it was a, you know, it was a dance, drama, music school. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they made the film about West Side um, uh, um, Performing Arts fame, I think it was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did, uh, so what, was any of your classmates um, anybody that went on to become successful? Yeah, there were a lot of, a lot of dancers uh, that came out of that. Um, Lee Becker, Ronnie Fields, Arthur Mitchell, wow. Eddie Valella, uh, Claude 
Bud Thompson. Wow. Uh, we had a we had quite a group, and we had on the drama side Suzanne Plachet. Ooh. Um, it was quite. It was, it was a very exciting period in my life. The, the four years in high school were fantastic. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. What What was uh, Suzanne Plachet like in those days? What was what? Suzanne Plachette. What was she like in those oh, days? Oh, she was lovely. She was absolutely fabulous. She was a, a really friend. Well, everybody in the school was loved to be there because that's what they wanted to do. So there was no sour grapes hanging around anywhere. You know, it was it was a great atmosphere. The teachers were fantastic. Um, the school was as at that time was still in the experimental stage about whether they were going to keep it. It was a vocational school. It was connected to the Metropolitan Vocational High School. There was two other ones. There was the SSW Brown, which was a merchant marine ship, and an auto body shop school. So there were three vocational schools connected. And uh, what, uh, performing arts was actually experimental and it turned out to be a big success right and in those days there was no internet uh people could be more experimental because it was such a small world then everybody knew each other oh yeah everybody at the school was uh you know very friendly but also extremely competitive because there was a certain standard that you had to keep in order to stay in the school because there was no room for mistakes because it was experimental. So uh, the teachers were great. I mean, we were so fortunate to have such great teachers. Mm -hmm. How how does uh, West Side Story uh, come into your life, the Broadway musical? Uh, well, uh, it, 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 there was a reason. I mean, ballet was always my first love, and that's what, what I wanted to do. But there were certain complications uh, company-wise, getting into the company and, and uh, a lot of business stuff. And I just decided, well, I don't know. You know, I don't know if I have the patience to wait to get into the company. It just so happened that Michael Kidd was in a class, a ballet class I was taking, and he was doing Little Abner. Mm -hmm. So he saw me and uh, he was in the same class and he asked me if I wanted to be in Little Abner. And I had no idea what Broadway was. It was, uh, I was strictly a ballet worm. Mm -hmm. um, it was after I had performed um, the soloist at Radio City Music Hall. So I said, yeah, why not? Sure, it's another, you know, it's another door. So I was in uh, Abner and um, I had seen Jerry Robbins around in the school and things and uh, he had spoken to me about the show that he was doing a show and he thought that I would be perfect for it. And, you know, you just go, oh yeah, oh good, sure. And as it came around, it came around. So that's how I did West Side. Wow. How many performances did you do on stage? Of West Side? Yeah. God, I was about a little over a year on Broadway and then went to, the, Cheetah and I went to London for a little over a year. Wow. Uh, West Side became a way of life. You know, <laughs> I staged uh, summer stock companies, the Japanese company, uh, and then of course did the film. So I was always sort of connected to West Side Story. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of discipline and skill to um, to to work on on Broadway for a long period of time. I mean, did you did you find yourself to be burnt out after a year? No, I wasn't burnt out. I, I had realized earlier when I guess it was during my Abner days that I really wasn't into performing. I really liked the pre-production, the production, the rehearsals. Um, I wasn't too keen on performing. Um, so I... I, I, I mean, I guess that went on because there was no other outlet for me at the time. Um, there was nothing else I could do. I mean, you don't learn a lot in the ballet class. So 
um, I just kind of felt my way and went from Abner to Westside. Uh, when Cheeto got back, uh, when we, we did Bye Bye Birdie, mm -hmm. which I assisted Gower Champion on, and I uh, wasn't really in the show, so it was a perfect development for me. And then uh, during Birdie, it was when I got the call to do the film, mm -hmm. and then after the film is when I really started saying, hey, what am I going to do here? You know, I don't like performing. <laughs> um I talked to a wonderful agent uh, who was at William Morris, and he said, oh, we'll get you some choreography jobs or something, you know? And I said, oh, I wasn't too keen on that either. But um, yeah. um, I, um, I was fortunate enough, it's a long story, I, I walked out of his office and walked into a... Um, another agent who happened to have been at Performing Arts, who was in the music department, mm -hmm. said, hey, Tony, what are you doing? I said, I'm just here seeing Tommy and uh, talking about what I'm gonna do. He said, hey, would you like to choreograph a show? And I said, <laughs> well, yeah, anything, you know. Yeah. He said, the Jimmy Dean show is looking for a new choreographer. I ended up doing the Jimmy Dean show and that really started the choreography. So I, right. I mean, it was fortunate, you know. Luck is uh, plays a great deal. Right. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask you about all of that, but uh, I, I wanted to ask about uh, West Side Story, the movie first. Did you jump the chance to do it, or were you skeptical that it would make a good movie? No, I never thought about whether it would make a good movie or not. I I was sort of at the birth of West Side Story, which was a very revolutionary at at its time. And um, when you create, I created this character, I mean, that was written. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I wanted to be a part of it because I thought that, you know, the show would live forever with the film. Right. And I wanted to be a part of it. So there was about four originals, I think, in the film. Um, and I no, I had no qualms about doing the film. I really wanted to. I had qualms because I was married. I had a daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, whether I could go to California for as long as it would take. Uh, but she insisted. She said, I, I think it's great that you want to be a part of it and you should do it. So that was part of the decision. So I went and did the film. How, how many months of uh, rehearsal on the movie? Because that whole opening for like 20 minutes it looks like it was months and months of rehearsal yeah i think we rehearsed the prologue and we rehearsed a couple of other things in about a i think it was almost six weeks of rehearsal uh, the, the, the decision was to actually do the opening prologue on the street or do it in the studio with a, a black drop and you know, all of that stuff went on, and they did, They decided to do it on the street. So all the rehearsal for the prologue sort of went out the window because Jerry had to re-choreograph for the street, you know, the actual streets. Right. So it was it was quite a mission. It was quite a quite a quite a mission he took on there. It was it, it was uh, it was difficult to revamp everything for the actual street than it would have been in the studio. So that was tough. But it was, to me, that was the best part, the rehearsal and the, the production. It's so beautiful and so complex, that first 20 minutes. It, it, it's truly magic. Um, how, how was Robert Wise as a director? Uh, you know, I had mixed feeling with him as a director. I, I, I felt... Um, I... I I don't know. I don't know how to put it, but I just felt like he wasn't uh, really helping actors. I never really saw him talk to an actor about anything. Um, so I had mixed feelings about it. Um, the guy was a great director. Had a great, you know, he's got a great track record. Oh I, yeah, he did some incredible films. There's no question that he was a master of the camera. 
my only question was about and how was he helping the actors? And of course, look, I was raw. It was the first time I ever been in front of a camera, so I'm not an expert. Right. And I think, you know, there, there's no question that there was some friction between Wise and Jerry. So um, that may have taken its toll as well, you know. Uh -huh. Would you, would you say that that Jerome Robinson directed the movie mostly, and just Robert Wise was just there? No, boy, that's hard to say. When we <laughs> opened, I mean, the prologue was all dance, so that was all Jerry directing. Um, even the Jet song, Jerry did more of. And I I don't know, you know, I know they were both discussing the shots. So I don't know if somebody was saying, this is what we're going to do and that's it. Or, you know, I don't really know what went on between the two of them there. But it, we knew there was friction. Everybody knew it. Um, and, and I think it was expected. Everybody wanted to be part of it, you know. So, yeah. um and it was Jerry's baby, and then Bob Wise was an experienced veteran of making films, and, you know, he made incredible films. So it was a battle of two geniuses, I guess you want to say, in a way. Certainly, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about working with uh, the stars Richard Beamer and Natalie Wood. Well, Natalie I had a special relationship with because... Uh, after Jerry left, uh, I was assigned to work with her on the dancing, and uh, I, I thought the world of Natalie, I thought Natalie was fantastic. I just think she was great. Um, I think when, uh, this is where I felt wise, I thought Richard Beamer needed some more guidance. Not that he wasn't, I, I kind of li I liked Dick. I thought he was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I think he needed help in certain scenes, and I don't think he was getting much help in that area. So I, I have uh, ambivalent feelings about how Weiss worked with the actors. But again, at that point, I'm an amateur, so that's just my bird's eye view. I'm not speaking for anybody else or anybody's opinion. Just my own. Of course. How about George Shakiris? George was wonderful. I mean, he knew West Side. We had worked together in London, but he was riff in London, in the London company. And uh, he was a perfect Bernardo. Absolutely perfect. How about a you? really, really nice man. I mean, genuinely a nice man. I've heard he is, yeah. How about Rita Moreno? Rita was great. I thought Rita did. A, Rita had a tough job because the part of Anita was quite a, you know, quite a successful role for Cheetah, and uh, I think Rita came in and did uh, did a really really good job. I mean, she knew her way around the studio. She was a veteran of films and uh, knew what she had to do on her own, as well as what input she was getting from. Jerry and and, uh, and Bob. I don't know what it was, but I thought she did an, uh, an excellent job. And uh, Russ Tamblin? Russ was great. I mean, I, there wasn't anybody on the film that I could say uh, was a problem working with or um, there was any... I don't know. There might have been a little normal friction between the Jets and the Sharks, but... Yeah. Um, <laughs> That sort of built in in rehearsal, you know? Yeah. Um, but I don't think there was any um, ill feelings really towards anyone. Uh, it was a shock when Jerry went. Um, yeah. I think the film suffered. Um, I, when I say suffered, I mean, I think the dance hall could have been a hundred times better. Right. It, it didn't come close to emulating the, uh, the, the Broadway v version? No, I, I, you know, I, I don't think it did. I don't think, um, 
I, 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 it didn't have the, it, it was built in competitive dancing, but I don't think that, uh, I hate to say it, but, you know, dancing is not just steps, it's an attitude, it's a behavior, and I think that more emphasis was placed on the dancing rather than what it was supposed to represent. It's, it's, it's more of a love story in the movie than um, about dancing. Yeah, I, 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 I think it was sort of a dance number and not being the competitiveness between the two gangs, the feelings between the two gangs. I, I sort of thought it missed that. Steven Spielberg has a remake of the movie coming out. How do you feel about that? I think it's exciting. <laughs> first, of, first of all, it's one director. He's a brilliant director. I, I mean, I've never worked with him, but I've seen his films. His camera work is incredible. Right. It never gets in the way of the movie, of the film he's doing. His casting is always spot on. Um, I don't know how he... Re relates to actors during the work but he must be doing something because the performances are spectacular and uh, his cat like i say his casting is genius i think uh, i'm really exciting um to see it because i think it's uh, it's it's quite a uh, it's going to be quite a discussion piece i think but i i have high hopes i really think it's going to be good yeah, I mean, you know, Hollywood is all about remakes now, you know, and so many remakes are terrible, but I have a feeling uh, yes, that this is going to be... I agree. I agree. A lot of remakes are terrible. Um, uh, I, I just don't think those remakes had Spielberg, you know? Yeah. I, I think he's exceptional. He's, I, I don't know, I would say the top three directors in the world for me. I, I think he's... Um, He's a phenomenon, He's, uh, to me, uh, just, again, my opinion. And I am looking forward to seeing the film very much. I, I don't have any, I'm not, I'm not gonna poo-poo the film and say, oh, West Side was better, this is a remake. You can't say any of those things until you see the film. Right. My gut feeling is it's gonna be pretty good. That's good. What, what, what do you think the overall appeal of West Side Story is? Because to me, it's it's a human tragedy disguised as a musical. Yeah, it is a human tragedy. I mean, it's, um, you, know, you know, it's a why can't we all get along kind of feeling, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, you know, again, West Side Story doesn't solve the problem of juvenile delinquency or racism or whatever you, whatever you, you know, you want to label it. Um, it, it. It never solved the story. It wasn't meant to. It, it 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 defined the problem. I think is what Jerry wanted to do. Uh, you remember in the very end of the film, some go along with it and some don't, and that's that's because there was no. He didn't cure it. You know. Yeah. So, uh, but it shows how. To me, foolish it is uh, with people, you know. Right. It, doesn't, it shouldn't matter who you are, what you are. And, you know, we all have many friends. <clears throat> I know I do, different races, different religions, and we're friends. Um, so you say, why can't that happen everywhere? Well, it just doesn't. There's wars, you know, there's... there's uh, we haven't stopped it yet. Maybe somebody will figure it out. I don't know. Yeah, I hope so. Have Have you ever met Alice Cooper? I beg your pardon. Have you ever met Alice Cooper? I I can't understand the name. Alice Cooper, the uh, the rock star. No, no, I never did. Oh, he's been imitating West Side Story on stage for many many years. He was greatly influenced by that movie. Oh, well, it's a good movie to be influenced by. <laughs> um, good, is he very successful? I don't know, I'm not understanding the name that you're saying. It's not you, it's my hearing, so. Uh, yeah. Oscar, is it Oscar you're saying? No, Alice. Arliss. 
Alice. Yeah, Alice Cooper. He's... Oh, Alice Co- I'm sorry. Of course, Alice Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, I'm not familiar with his work, really. Uh, he wasn't my cup of tea. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, of course. <laughs> um, but uh, he was very successful. Uh, so, no, I know. I've never been to one of his concerts. Okay. Uh, then um, you you had a role in the uh, classic war movie, The Longest Day. Do you remember anything about that? Uh, I, I was fortunate enough. I was in London working, had put Bye Bye Birdie on. Um, Gawa wanted me to put it up on stage. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, some casting director was at a party and said, hey, why don't you go to France? They're looking for Americans for little roles and stuff. And, uh, you know, I said, no, I don't think I want to do that because, I, like I said, I didn't really want to perform anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Robert Wagner, who was a friend because of Natalie right. during the film, said, oh, come on over, you'll have fun, it'll be blah, blah. So I was supposed to go over for do a day's work and have some fun. Ended up being there for about three and a half to four weeks. Um doing little bits and pieces. Some of them were not in the film, but I got there late. These were all pickup shots that Zanuck was directing himself uh, because they wanted to extend the time of the film because they had so many stars in it. I mean, God, uh, I could say I worked with uh, 500 movie stars, (laughs) not in the same scene, but... But I did meet, uh, did work with Paul Anka and Tommy Sands and Fabian. It was absolutely fabulous. I thought it was, the film was great. Yeah. Oh, it's one of the great war movies. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I thought it was, uh, and Zanuck was one of the most dynamic people I've ever met in my life. He was, he, um, he was definitely the boss. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he wanted. He knew exactly what he had to get. In fact, we even ad-libbed a couple of scenes um, that he just wanted to use in the barracks. So it was um, the one with, during the crap game was uh, totally talked about in the morning before we even shot it. Me borrowing money going down the aisle right. uh, into the crap game. I mean, that's how, I mean, Zanuck was so in charge. So, um, I mean, I thought he was I one of the most dynamic people I've ever worked with, including Jerry nice. and Michael Kidd. I can't leave him out. And then um, you went to war again with combat. Oh, yes. I <laughs> really I liked that. That was fun. That was enjoyable. Uh, you know, I wasn't... Uh, it was like a dead period. Um, and I had just gotten back from... Somewhere, I can't remember now where it was. I guess it was London or something. And uh, the, uh, the agent asked me to come in to meet the director. I met the director and I ended up doing two, actually. One with Tab Hunter and one with Jeffrey Hunter. Right. <laughs> what were they like to work with? I, I tell you, I'm... I am either I'm I'm easy to get along with or I'm not I don't know but I the, the Tab Hunter was really great and Jeffrey Hunter was one of the nicest people you'd ever meet um, and it was fun working on I mean it's tough coming in to a series where everybody knows each other and they know exactly what they're gonna do how they're gonna do it and you're sort of put into the middle of it it's a little bit touch and feel position and not being a trained actor or having any training to fall back on it was tough but I, I enjoyed it I liked it and, and uh, Joby Baker was in an episode with you too Joby Baker yes yes <laughs> yeah my god that was that's the name you pulled out wow <laughs> do you remember appearing on the outer limits Outer Limits was uh, Joe Stefanko who wrote Psycho, the film. Uh, It just so happened, Gina and I were staying up in Benedict Canyon, and he was our neighbor. And uh, he was a fan of the show, and Gina was doing, I think, Zenda at the time or something. And 
he said to me, you know, do you want to be on the show? And I said, sure. So, so he put me on the show. And then Cheetah did one as well. Um, it was great. I, 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 you know, I love being in the business and I loved working with the people. It was always an adventure. It was always something to think about. And I love the work. I love the process, you know. Of course, yeah. And then uh, you mentioned before about uh, choreographing uh, a variety of shows, Jimmy Dean Show, Jim Neighbors, uh, Sunday and Cher Show. You got any good stories there? Yeah, um, I love doing the Sunny and Cher show because the way it was, it wasn't really dancing, it was more staging. We had like six other comedians who was far from dancing uh, as a polar bear is, you know. Uh, but but it, it was a great challenge and um, you never thought Sonny was going to do it and he always ended up doing it and doing it great. So, you know, there was always that excitement about how Sonny going to do this because, you know, Sonny uh, wasn't the best mover in the world and he was just a funny guy who could write songs and, and was funny. Everybody loved working with him and, and Cher. She was great. Yeah, were, 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 did, did they ever fight, though? Because it was, like, near the end of their marriage. You know, uh, it's funny. Uh, when I decided to leave the show, it was during the summer hiatus, and they were on tour, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I heard about it sort of like through the grapevine that they were separating, and uh, fortunately for me, uh, I was already leaving the show, so I didn't really know that much about it, and um, I, I still don't know what happened, but yeah. they split, and I was off the show at that time. I went on to produce uh, a Mama Cass special. Oh, yeah. I, was, I wanted to ask about that. Was she a friend of yours? Oh, well, she wasn't a friend. I mean, a worker met her through work, but she was... Uh, Again, she had, she was a very creative lady. I mean, she had a part in what we were doing. Some of it was kind of impossible to get in the amount of time that we had to do it in. But she had a lot of friends like Joel Gray and Dick Van Dyke was on the show. And, um, oh, God, what's her name? She was in the... Um, Mamas and the Papas. Oh, Michelle Phillips. Michelle Phillips. And... Uh, it's I don't know. There was seemed to be a little tension between the two of them, but I don't I don't know what it was about. Uh, but we had, it was fun. You know, I, I there isn't anything I can say about something that I really hated doing. Um, <laughs> if I if I had to say that, I'd have to say that about trying to act. I hated that because or sing, no ability whatsoever to sing, none. None. I couldn't couldn't <laughs> carry a tune from Forty Second Street to Forty Third Street. <laughs> did you have someone overdub you? No, it was mostly what I did was gang singing anyway. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was mostly all gang singing, so I had no problem with that. What What made you get into directing television? You know, actually, that came through because of. Um, not knowing what I wanted to do. And it, it seemed a natural progression to go from dancer to dance captain to assistant choreographer to choreographer. The only thing, you know, variety shows were going out at that time. And I had to do something. And I got a Valerie Harper actually asked me if I would direct one of her shows. Okay. And I, uh, I told her, I said, I have no experience as directing. And she said, oh, you know, you know what to do. And actually, that's how I, I got started directing was through Valerie Harper. Yeah, you d d directed uh, Rhoda. And, Rhoda, um, yeah. And then I went on to do, you know, Tony Randall, Cloris Sleachman, uh, all the... Um, I, my, my last shows were Walk a Texas Ranger in 7-7, where I met Dawn. Right. And um, you, you directed um, Angie. Do you remember uh, working with Diane Robin, who played Dee Dee Malloy on that show? With uh, Dee Dee who? 
Uh, Diane Robin, she played Dee Dee Malloy on that show. Doris Roberts, you saying? No, no, Diane Robin. No, actually, I don't. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. You know? She's a friend of mine. I was just curious. No, I don't. Well, you know, when you come in and out on the show, yeah, you don't meet everybody. Uh, um, I don't know. I, you know, somehow I, 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 I probably will remember her if I see her face. But uh, uh, she was uh, Donna Pascal was another lady, nice lady, really nice. I don't know what she's doing now. Is she doing a series? Um, I, I think so. I mean, you know, she was doing that psychic, uh, thing back in the nineties where she was doing the infomercials. Yeah. I, I don't know if she's, uh, working in uh, television, uh, currently. No, I see her name occasionally on, uh, uh, when I get on Facebook, something, sometimes she leaves some things, but I, I don't, I haven't been keeping up with it. And Robert Hayes, he was, he was a great guy, Robert. Oh yeah, I've met him a couple of times. I, I, yeah, I really liked him. Yeah, I, I, I met him at a convention. I wanted to ask him questions, but he kept asking me questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a pretty easygoing guy. Yeah, he, he is. Pretty I think good. I think his home was destroyed in the fire a couple of years ago. Oh really? I think oh, so. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, that's that's really sad. Oh, uh, to lose anything like that is. I don't know, monumental letdown. Wow. I don't know. Sad. You you worked with um, Marty Short on The Associates? Monty. Marty, Mar Martin Short. Oh, Marty Short, yes, on The Associates. Oh, Marty's fabulous. Joe Riggle Budo, Wilfred Hyde White. Uh, they were, they were, the show just didn't make it. I don't, I don't know why. Um. Uh, I think James Brooks was the creator, one of the creators. And I think he sort of left the show and was preparing a film or already started directing a film. And I think when Jim Brooks wasn't around, I, I don't think the show really had the direction anymore where yeah. it was going. Yeah. Uh, you never made it, I don't think. I don't, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, you worked with um, Michael J. Fox on uh, Family Ties. Yes, Michael was wonderful. Uh, Gary Goldberg, the executive creative producer, was fabulous. I had worked with him before on a Tony Randall series, and uh, uh, they were all, they were all, uh, I can't say anything, you know, uh, what's her name, Bate, Bateman? Uh, uh, Justine? Yeah, she was she was really such a sweet, talented young lady. I'm surprised she's not doing anything because her brother's doing great. Oh yeah, <laughs> Justin he's, Bateman. He's wonderful. I worked with him on an, uh, some other TV show that Valerie had. I can't remember what it was. I think it was just called the Valerie Show. I I don't remember. I think so. Yeah, and Jason then Bateman was on it. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I, can't, uh, I can't remember the show actually. Well, he did the Hogan family. That's how he first got known. Oh, uh, I yeah, I don't remember. I don't. I really don't remember. <laughs> uh, uh, you uh, you did a lot. Of, you did a lot of the Stephen J. Cannell shows. Uh, was he a close friend of yours? Who, who's again? Stephen J. Cannell. Stephen. Stephen J. Cannell. Oh, so I'm sorry, Cannell, yes. Well, I did a lot of work there, yeah. Uh, it was um, it was like a factory, you know? They were just getting shows out, hit shows, and uh, hmm. yeah, I did A-Team, and uh, Hardcastle McCormick, Hunter, Riptide. Uh, it was, uh, wow, and that was at the beginning of my... Uh, learning process of uh, filming one camera shows, um, but that was a struggle for me when it started because I, I didn't really quite understand the process. I didn't realize that when you rehearsed, you had to 
get the uh, setups in your mind, you know. <laughs> I, you know, I'd go on the stage first time and start staging it, and the cameras, you know, they, they were behind because I really didn't know what I was going to do till I got there. And because you never got to rehearse with the actors, right. they were already filming an episode, and you just, you know, location scouted and um then got up on the sets with the actors and it was it was a real uh, uh boy it was a quick tour you had to learn fast but it was great i i uh i had a it was like going to school <laughs> actually <laughs> on their money so uh, but it was good he was such a brilliant writer stephen j candle we lost him way too soon Oh, he was very young, yeah. I don't know. He, he, I don't know how he did it. I mean, uh, he had good people around him, but to have that many shows going at the same time, and, you know, who's the other one that's like the David Kelly? David E. Kelly, uh, Stephen yeah, Bochco. He, no, he kept all those shows going and writing them all, and uh, at least Cannell had writers. Uh, David Kelly was writing almost all the shows, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Uh, amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, there are amazing people in the business, I'll tell you. There are a lot of amazing people. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so what are you doing these days? Uh, playing golf occasionally. <laughs> uh, enjoying Montana. Uh, I have a place up here in Big Fork, Montana, which I love. When the weather's good, when we're not getting the smoke from the California fires. Yeah. Um, um, I really, when I retired, I, it was really time to retire. I, I had had enough. Um, speaking for myself, it was it's a very difficult work for me. I... Um, it didn't, uh, you know, it wasn't like just waking up in the morning and rolling off a log and doing it. For me, I had to really prepare. Um, so it, it was tough. I don't think I had a lot of natural ability in directing. So I really had to work on it. And I think when I was ready to retire, I just said, I'm ready. <laughs> uh, that's it. Uh, I don't miss working at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love the business. I still, you know, enjoy seeing certain things. and um, But um, as far as missing and saying, boy, I'd love to do it again, no chance. <laughs> None whatsoever. And I can, you know, somebody like Dawn, mm -hmm. who's, is, I mean, I'm going to say the word genius at what she does. Yeah. Anybody who can work with kids like she did and get out of them what she was able to get, you know, when you're talking about an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, um, with a bunch of other kids around, uh, director's dilemma was always, I don't want to do a scene with an animal and a kid at the same time. And Dawn just threw that out the window. It was amazing. Um, what what she could do, and her attitude about doing it, and as helpful as she was to, I'm sure all the directors that she's worked with. And the reason she still does it is because she's so good at it. Yeah, she's my biggest supporter too, and oh. she's. I've only known her. Uh, you, you got a good person supporting you. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I, I've only known her a year, but she's just been so superb and fantastic. She's an amazing lady. You know, she loves what she's doing. She really does love it. Um, I, I, I love her energy on the set. She's never <clears throat> tries to take the set over. She never tries to interfere. Um, if she has a suggestion, she does it quietly. Um, I, 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 I've never worked with a person who... Uh, actually had to work with children on scripts that they would the, the people that i worked with were just like school teachers yeah. you know who took the you know who taught arithmetic during the breaks right but she actually worked with these kids i mean and she was always open 
to anybody who needed help or assistance. It didn't matter if it was her job or not her job. She was 100% pro whatever you were doing. So you get, you have a very good friend. She's a very caring person. I'm so lucky. Uh, by the way, where do you live? I don't recognize the... Uh, Redding, California. Where's 530? Zip code. Yeah, uh, Redding, California. Redding? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. Redding. I'm, I'm trying to... Is that up north with, with the Sierras? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, oh, yes, Redding. My God, my daughter went to school up there somewhere. There yeah. Was a private school up there. It was like a country club. I'm born and raised in uh, San Francisco. Mount Shasta? No. no. Yeah. It's, um, we got Mount Shasta over here. Yes. Um, I'm born and raised in San Francisco, and I've been up here for four years. Oh. That's lovely. Up north. Are you uh, being affected by any of the fires? We, we have fires up here, um, but they haven't affected our neighborhood, Knockwood, and um, a lot of people are evacuating in their areas. It's, it's really sad. I just hope that oh. um, I hope, oh. I, I hope that we've seen the worst this summer because there's been plenty of them this summer. Well, I know because I'm up, like I say, in Montana, and we're surrounded by fires, Idaho, Washington. Uh, the, the worst one now is the one by Lake Tahoe, I guess. That still seems to be the worst one. It is. It's been pretty bad over there. Oh, sounds awful. I mean, God bless them. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, I hope you're safe. I, I'm pretty safe, yeah. Good, good, good. Well, Tony, this has been a tremendous honor, and I, I'm so glad that Don could connect us. So thank you so much for oh, coming great. on. No, not a problem. It's just I, I was when you were calling. It was about um, a time when I was doing. I was having work done on the roof uh -huh. in the backyard. Uh, it sounded like there was a war going on all day long. I couldn't get my thoughts together. So. <laughs> But I'm glad, saying I hope I helped you get whatever you needed, and um, uh, I'm uh, I'm available if you need anything else. You are fantastic, thank you, sir. And please stay safe over there. And I will. Have I a, will. Same to you. And have a great day, sir. Oh, you too, Tommy. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, there you have it, Tony Mordente. Ain't he a great man? Oh, I'm not even going to call him a cool dude. He's a great man. And I'm so glad that Don could connect us today. I finally got to interview someone from West Side Story. And I am just blessed beyond blessed. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, There's no shame in living in the past. Because the present sucks. Later, dudes! When you're a jet, you stay a jet. Pow.